and welcome to the podcast. I'm Marie Dreisey. And I'm Farouk Sotoni. Hello! Hello! Um, the Right Hour Podcast, if you don't know, is a podcast that aims to produce works of audio drama by uh, new and emerging writers. Yeah, welcome to our April 1st episode. It's not a, it's not a joke, it's really here. Yeah. Today we have some little podcast plays for you. Um, and by some, I mean... <laughs> By some, I mean four. Four, yes, yes, we mean four. Four, obviously four some. Four some. is a number. Um, uh, and these plays are united by... <sighs> by no internal logic whatsoever, apart yep. from the fact that they sort of um, uh, offer a range of tones and a range of things. Yeah. A range of tones and a range of, what's the word? Uh, styles. Styles. A range genres. Of tones, a range themes. of styles and genres and themes and yeah. people and places and things. It speaks to our motto, which is, you know, we want the writers to be able to write what inspires them, not what we're asking of them. So they're as unique and different as the writers themselves. Okay, before we start, we would like to talk a little bit about the future plans for this podcast. As you know, this is... Well, as, you, um, as you may well know, if you don't listen to the previous episodes, uh, this podcast is in its first season. Um, and in this season, we are um, producing pieces that were sent to us when we opened our first season call last August. And this current season will end in about August. Um, and by that, by about August, I obviously mean September. Um, <laughs> and we have plans that are slightly different for the second season. Yes. So um, <laughs> uh, we would like to go from releasing an episode every month to every two weeks. Um, and we are hoping, we're also, also hoping to make our calls more routine. So instead of one big call that will form the entire season, we will have multiple calls during the season. More on that later. Uh, if you would like to, um, if you'd like to know when our next script call was, will be, um, check out our website, therighthourpodcast.com. Um, there's a submission section on there where we will update regularly when the call is going to be. And obviously, we would love it if you recommend this podcast to people or yes. share it on social media. Like, review, share, subscribe. Tell your mom, tell your friends. Tell your butcher if you have a butcher. Yeah. Although, who the hell has a butcher these days? Yeah. My mom has a butcher, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a but I, I've got a butcher. Why do you have a butcher? He seems like a nice guy. It's near my house, you know. <laughs> How the other half live? Um, okay. <laughs> Our first piece for you today is The Dickens Effect by Patty Cassidy. Uh, all, all pots. Oh, Christ, not again. I beg your pardon. You, again. I thought I was rid of you. I've never met you before. Not you, but I've already met your pals. Christmas past and Christmas present. It's about time for you to show up. Christmas future, isn't it? That's right. Pleased to meet you. I heard it didn't go too well with the others. Nope. They didn't get what they were after. And that was? My nervous breakdown. Not true. Mm-hmm. No one wants you to fall apart. Of course you do. But no matter how well it's worked out for you before, it's not going to happen to me. And why is that? Because I'm not a total illiterate. I've seen Christmas Carol a hundred times, read it in school. Scrooge gets visits from the past, present, and future. They break him down with escalating hallucinations. He cracks up and gives his money away to the poor and loves children and geese or something. And just because you know the story... I'm not finished. Even if I didn't know the story... We now have something called psychotherapy to help deal with delusions like you. If they're bad enough, we also have lots of drugs to make them go away. I am actually more than a delusion. I... And last of all, I have nothing to be ashamed of. Interesting. You bring up the shame word. Don't start with me. 
I talked to my therapist about your visits. She put it all in perspective. She said her wealthy clients often have blips like this. She said not to worry about it. She called it the Dickens effect. So, you were frightened by our visits? I'll admit it shook me up, but I've got my therapist on speed dial to deal with relapses. As a matter of fact, I can call her now. I don't think it's necessary. I have the camera on so she can get the whole effect. You and the Father Christmas suit and all. This is Camille Defoe. I can't answer the phone right now, but if you need help immediately, please call. She also said I needed to calm down from work. The holidays are too stressful. I started deep breathing and meditating. How's that working out for you? Okay. Until now, I may need meds. Hey, can anyone else here see you, or does it look like I'm talking to myself? Which is worse, looking like you're talking to yourself or talking to a man in a Father Christmas suit? Jeez, I hadn't thought of that. Maybe we should sit in a booth. We've had some meetings about you lately. <laughs> That's flattering. A whole symposium on Paul J. Potts. What did you decide? It wasn't just about you. It was about your whole generation. Ever since 1987, the Gordon Gecko Syndrome has been booming. As in, Gordon Greed is Good Wall Street Gecko? I love that movie. My friends and I watch it every year at Christmas. He's made our lives pretty tough. Nobody's interested in changing their lives, the world, nothing now. The world moves on. We've grown beyond you. Apparently. It's pretty demoralizing. It's actually depressing. We keep hoping you'll turn things around, though. Any reason you've picked on me? People will listen to you. You're very persuasive. It's not just about you. It's way beyond that. Hmm, do tell. You want a drink? No, thanks. I do. Right. I guess it would go right through you. Bartender, one more over here. Now, where were we? This is all about the poor, the unlucky, the abused, the victims. They need your help. They can learn to help themselves. If we do it, they'll still be at the mercy of someone else. This way, they're hungry enough to climb the ladder themselves. Survival of the fittest and all that jazz. They should thank us. You just make them weaker. Seems to me I've heard all that before. I never claimed it was mine. It sounds logical. It sounds easy. It's pathetic that even some of your victims buy into it. They try hard to make it in a world where the deck is stacked against them. Them's the breaks. They might come back as millionaires the next time around. Still pretty unoriginal there, Paul. I gave you credit for more brains than that. But I have to be honest with you. I have another reason for trying to make you see the light. Ha! I knew it! Shoot! I'm under orders. You are my final shot. I've had too many failures over the past couple of years. I have to convince you to change your ways or else. Or else what? Or else I lose my job. You can lose your job? It's happened before to others. But I mean lose your job. Yes, and it is not fun. <laughs> oh my god, I, I can see you at the unemployment office now. The tabloid coverage, the political campaigns, the Oprah interviews. This is rich. You'll need an agent. Thanks so much for your understanding. It's my trademark. Let me see. If you get fired, what will you do? I could show you if I had a computer. You use those? They're easier than whisking unwilling subjects around the world. I'm surprised the others didn't use them. We never got that far. Here, use my tablet. Here we all are, under a bridge. See how thin we are? It's bitter cold, and all we have are these tatters to huddle in. Even though we're very old, when we get sick we can't afford health care. No government help for us since we don't have ID. Of course, it's Christmas season and we get a lot of work as street corner Santas. Hmm, that's harsh, all right. I feel sorry for you guys, but don't try and pit it all on me. You could have prepared for it. 
socked away a few bucks here and there from a generous convert. We never thought that it would come to that. And we weren't allowed to see our own futures before it was too late. So you've already lost your job? No, but it's close enough to keep us working harder to save you, to save the world. Tough stuff. But remember, you only lose if you're a loser. And you're only a loser if you don't think ahead. You can change the future if you know what's coming. Hey, I think I have a solution. It's a win-win answer for both of us. Have a drink, my friend. Am I going to like this? Well, that's entirely up to you. You want me to do something for someone else and influence the world for better, right? Of course. And you don't want to be living under bridges if you fail, right? Right again. Well, here's my offer. I could use you in my work. That little prescience thing of yours could come in pretty handy in the market. It could save your ass from destitution. You help me, and I help you. We're both happy. Why do I feel as though I'm being sucked into a swamp? So, if you can see the future, and my job is to finance the future... The ultimate insider trading. Exactly. But it wouldn't be traceable to any leaks. And once you get going, you'd be able to fund some of your own down and outers. You'd be rich enough to give your dough to charities directly, instead of trying to change people like me. You said we're hopeless anyway. I didn't say you were hopeless. I just said it was getting harder to make an impact on you. But what about Christmas past and present? We work as a tag team. I couldn't leave them behind. One more round over here? No, he's still not drinking. Oh, right, your pals. Well, present could be pretty useful to a couple of information gathering services. Even the NSA couldn't catch him if he dropped in on some scenes unannounced. You mean corporate espionage? It doesn't just have to be corporate. Spying? You make it sound ugly. Now, as for the past, we could rent him out to forensic researchers. They'd pay a packet to be able to see the scene of a crime while it was still happening. That would be brilliant. There's something very wrong here. Uh, it's just using your talents for good, but getting paid for it. It's illegal. It's part of the problem instead of the solution. You'd be taking care of yourself. You'd be adding to the total wealth of the world. If you play it right, you could become one of the world's greatest philanthropists, like Carnegie and Noble. You could inspire millions of people. Welcome to the Future Foundation. You're getting carried away, but you are pretty persuasive, I must say. So, we have a deal? I'll think about it and talk with the others. Let's just say that we don't not have a deal. There's a complication, though. What's that? I'm not sure that we can take our pals with us. Mm. Well, that's a deal-breaker, obviously. You'll just have to figure out how to keep them. I can't see any way to... Okay, here's the deal. Say I act like you worked your magic on me. You'd keep your job and your powers. I'd write my donations to charity into my development budget. I could even play with kids, losers, and drunks for as long as I needed to. You guys work with me under the table and start bankrolling your getaway. I'd invest for you. This gets slime here by the minute. I need a bath. I don't think I could sell it to the others. Consider the alternatives, my friend. What good are you going to do under a bridge? I could even talk a couple of my friends into the same deal. You could renew your contract every Christmas. I'll talk to the others. Hey, pal, where'd you go? Was I too late? Are you coming back? I can fix you up in some nice Armani. A Jaguar? I'll do whatever you say for the rest of my life, but just come back! Merry Christmas, Paul Potts. Thanks for the ideas. We'll be in touch. Uh, that was The Dickens Effect by Patty Cassidy, directed by Emma Jude Harris, featuring... Someone? <laughs> featuring um, Ross Kernahan as Paul and Dale Savage as uh, Christmas Future. Um, yeah. Yeah. I quite like the idea of Christmas Future just meeting up with somebody in a bar and having a chat. Like, it seems like a very contemporary version of a Christmas story. I always found the sort of final message of 
Christmas Carol, they got some upbeat, go, oh, go, go and get me the fattest goose. Or was it was it turkey? I don't but there's know. a goose. I um, yeah, I, I, I always found that a little bit too artificial. I think this is a much better uh, version of it. Yeah. Okay, what do we have next? So the next piece we have is VoiceOver by Jonathan Hughes. You're listening to The Drama Hour, proudly sponsored by Mitchells. For when you need it, choose Mitchells, naturally. This week's drama is entitled VoiceOver and was written by Jonathan Hughes. And cut. How was that? Yeah, that was perfect. Moving on. Thanks so much for this, Rachel. You're really saving the day. Oh, I'm happy to help. Sorry, I should introduce myself. I'm Greg Limestreet. I'll be directing this session. Oh, sorry, I thought that was Charlie. No, no, no. Charlie is just our engineer for the afternoon. Isn't that right, Charlie? Hmm. I'm in the booth upstairs, monitoring from afar, as it were. Okay, nice to meet you. Is that her real accent? Sorry, hello? Sorry, Rachel. I'm here with Sylvia Montgomery, one of our producers, who wanted to oversee the session on behalf of the clients. Oh, hi. Seriously, Greg, we couldn't get a West Country accent for these reads. Sylvia, we've been over this. Is there something wrong with my accent? I can try something else. I can do West Country. Guys, finger off the button. Sorry about that, Rachel. Don't worry. Your voice is perfect. A few of these promos will require specific accents, but we'll cross that when we come to it. I'm sure you'll be able to handle it. Sure. Shouldn't be a problem. Phone should be off in the booth. Oh, sorry. Great stuff. We'll be going thick and fast through these, I'm afraid. No time for a second takes, and we have a lot to get through. What's the worst that could happen? Shh. Yeah. You'll be fine, I'm sure. I'll do my best. Can I get some water, actually? Ready for number two. Sultry, please. Sultry? Deep Velvet, take one. Do you ever feel not so fresh? Uh, uh, why settle for second best? For all your needs, what could, what could be more luxurious than the touch of Deep Velvet? Deep Velvet for the pussy that demands more. Cut. Sorry, what was that about? Kitty litter, dear. Get your mind out of the gutter. You want a kitty litter ad to be seductive? It sells. Well, was that all right? It'll do. I can do it again. Phone's off in the booth. I don't think it's... mine. Turn it off now. It's not... uh... Everything all right, Rachel? Yeah, it's just... Number three, stand by. Childlike. Childlike, right, okay. Uh... Like you're seven years old. God. Thanks, Rachel. Rolling! It sure is great being a kid. The sun is shining, all my friends are here, and we're having fun in the park. You want to know what isn't so great? My mummy never checked the sex offender's register first. And now me and my friends are all at risk because she didn't know the weird man who lives down the street was weird for a reason. Don't make the same mistake she did. Always check the register. Paid for by the Parents for Child Welfare Children's Committee. Cut. What was that? Excuse me, what was that about? That committee is going to be pissed. Wait, is that committee made up of parents or children? Well, who cares? Excuse me, what was that? Five minute break. Nothing to worry about. You are doing fine. Phone's off in the booth. What? Yeah, sorry, I, I thought it was. Wait, this isn't my... Did someone lose their phone? Hello? Hello, Rachel? Y- yes, hello, who's this? Oh, Rachel, sweetie, thank God. Where have you been? Why didn't you answer? I- I'm sorry, who's this? She's dead, Rachel, she's gone. You have to get here. I'm sorry, what happened? Who's dead? Oh, I'm sorry, I have to call you back. Just hurry up, Wait, who is this? E- everyone's wait- Hello? Hello? Everything all right, Rachel? I-, I don't think so. Oh, God, what now? What's wrong, love? Do you need water? Charlie, can we get her some water, please? This is it my phone? It- She really shouldn't be using her phone in the booth. I told her no phone. She's she's dead. Who's dead, love? I don't know. Well, who called you? I don't know. And that's not even your phone? No, but they they said my name. Great, another crazy one. Maybe it was all an elaborate coincidence. I mean, he knew my voice and my name. Rachel, I'm afraid we're really stuck for time here. We have to move on. Yeah, no, no, fine. Okay, it's fine. It's all a coincidence. It'll be fine. Good, because we have a room full of girls dying for this session. You can be replaced in an instant. Don't forget that. Did Charlie bring you that water? No, no, he didn't yet. Charlie, please, the water. (laughs) 
Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. All right, ready to go. Cue the playback. In the style of Anne Robinson, please. What? And action. Oh, have you... Uh, have you... Have you ever wondered what makes the crow call? Or what makes the lamb bleat? In a world of unimaginable horror comes a new nightmare. From the people who brought you the deadening and what's on the inside comes a new blood-curdling tale about true evil's rise to power. Blair. Coming August the 5th to CBBC. Cut. Sorry, is that an actual show? Rachel, that was amazing. While we're here, can you improvise a couple of new stings? Playback cued. Action. In a world of unreal torment. Good. In a land gripped by sheer panic. Perfect. In a time of mass confusion caused by extreme terrorism. Nope, we're done. In a... What? We're done? We can't have terrorists on CBBC. Really, what is she thinking? I don't think she's cut out for this, really. Oh, I'm sorry. I, of course, I can try something else. How about... In a tale spun by over-caffeinated spin doctors. That's fine, Rachel. We have more than we need already. Well, what do you want to do? We're already here. She was the only one available. We can always re-record tomorrow. We have her for another 15 minutes. Why don't you keep working? If you want to keep wasting your own time, that's fine. But I'd really rather not. I mean, she's absolutely useless. Is this something I, I'm doing wrong? I, I'm happy to try something different. Maybe if the directions weren't given so soon before I start speaking. Maybe we could discuss them a little uh, as I'm doing what you want. So I'm doing what you want. I mean, I've actually had quite a bit of experience at this stage, but I've never had a session like this. Look, if you're not cut out for this, just go. No, please. That's not what I'm saying. I I'm so happy to be here. This is the RTB. This is the big league. I know I can do it. Let me try one more, please. I'm getting a coffee. What do you want? How about we take another quick break? Five minutes, everyone. No? No phones in the booth! No? Rachel, where the bloody hell are you? Everyone's waiting! Waiting where? Who is this? I think you have the wrong number. Christina can't get through to you at all. Where the hell are you? Christina? You know my sister? Rachel, no isn't the time. You need to get here. They're asking questions. I can't believe you're missing this. <laughs> She's gone, Rachel. Who? It's, it's your... No phones in the booth! What did you do? That was important. I think someone's... Someone's dead? Sure they are. All set, Rachel. I... Uh, and what now? No, no. I'm fine. Let's do this. Setting up. How would you like the next one? Like Dervla Cohen voicing an m and food advert. No problem. Standing by. Sweet dreams. Freedom. Any way you want it. Karma Chameleon. Uh, all the essential hits from the 80s, all on a deluxe four-disc CD set. Sledgehammer. Girls just want to have fun. Easy lover. Let's dance. The list goes on. Presenting Out of Touch, a musical journey through the 80s. Listen to it with your ears and let your heart follow. Call your operator now and ask for Out of Touch. We're standing by to take your call. Get out of touch. Don't be out of time. Now. Cut. That was perfect. Wasn't it, Sylvia? Mm. I agree, it would have been better if we got those music clearance rights for any of those songs, but the M&S thing works wonders to, se to sell sticky toffee pudding. They'll be fine. That was okay, then? That was perfect, my dear. Sylvia, anything you'd like to change? Mm -mm. It was fine, Rachel. Good job. Well done. One more before I need to change that battery pack, guys. Perfect. Just enough time, then, for this next one, Rachel. All set. Good to go. Any dialect? No, oh, this one is very self explanatory. Don't worry. Playback. You're listening to RTB. The time is 6 pm, and these are today's local funeral announcements. Uh, Flannery Thomas, 52, peacefully at his home. Removal to St. Patrick's Church on the evening of October the 12th. Funeral mass the following morning at 9 a.m. with burial in adjoining cemetery. Family flowers only. O'Connor, Elizabeth, 64, at St. Mary's Hospital after a battle with cancer. Private wake with funeral in St. Bartholomew's Church on October the 16th at 12 p.m. In lieu of flowers, donations to be made to St. Mary's Cancer Trust. Oliver. What the 
fuck is this? What's going on? What's the matter? Should I cut? Keep rolling, Rachel, please. We only have one more. Is this some sort of sick joke? Just read the damn announcement, drama queen. Oliver. Sophie. Seven years old. Today it's 4.30pm when struck by a motorist near her home. Funeral arrangements TBA as her mother cannot be connected contacted a present. Is this some kind of sick joke? I don't understand. Why would you write my daughter's name in the script? Rachel, those announcements were just sent to No, me. I know. What? What are you doing? Well, why don't we all take five and I'll change those batteries? More water for her, please. Hang in there, Rachel. Just one promo left for Where's today. my phone? I need to leave. I have to get out of here. Where is my phone? No phones in the booth. Hey, just back off. I'm out of here. Let me get out of here. I have to go. You have five minutes left. Excuse me. Let me go. On the phone. Hello? 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 She's gone, Rachel. I thought she's gone. No. No. Who is this? Who put you up to this? She was crossing the road to see her cousin. Why are you doing this to me? Stand by. You have to help me. I'm trapped here. Rachel? Miss Oliver, please, oh, please get off help the floor. me! Hey, no phones in the booth. Oh, come. Where are... Hello, hello. What are you doing to me? Where is my daughter? Everything all right, Rachel? This one really is a psycho. Where is my daughter? Your, your daughter? <laughs> I've no idea. Where did you leave her? No, that report, that phone call. Greg, we really have to get that last promo in. I've got. To... I'm not recording anything. I need to leave it. Now, for God's sake. Rachel, sweetie. I can't let you go, I'm afraid. We've booked in for the full half hour. We need to get these in the can. We're on a tight deadline here. Just let her go. She's ruining them anyway. Can't even hold it together to record five promos. Just let me go, please. I couldn't even if I wanted to. The door is on central lock. It won't open for another five minutes. You're stuck. Oh, my God. That's how we do things here. Sophie! So, with that in mind, we really should try and get that last promo in. Excuse me. I mean, you have nothing else to do right now. And we are paying for this studio time. Just read the bloody sheet, honey. It's not hard. My daughter might just have... Yeah, sure. But our client is waiting for this recording. Just do one take while you're here. I don't, I don't think... Playback, please. Playback. I don't know the first thing about track... Track and mortgages. I mean, it's all just so confusing to me. I don't. I just couldn't take it anymore. This rain. <laughs> that rain. <laughs> this what? What even is a variable APR anyway? Who can give the best deal for my family? Who could secure the brightest future for my child? Who should I trust? <sighs> That's why I talked to Malcolm, the no nonsense financial advisor. Well, Malcolm, he makes sense of all the big <laughs> problems. Cut. Wow. Wow. That was. Perfect. What? Rachel, you superstar. <laughs> you actually did it. You survived the trial shift. No one ever survives that kind of pressure. What? What? I didn't think you had it in you, kid. I thought you'd be gone after the first one, but you stayed till the end. We even killed your kid and <laughs> nothing. We've never had to do that before to someone. <laughs> Totally worth it. That financial advisory ad is perfect. The Malcolm guys will love it. You're a genius. What's going on? Rachel, relax. You are perfect, our new superstar. I want you back here on Monday. You are our new voiceover artist of choice. If you can handle that, I mean, wow. Sophie, is she all right? What kind of people are you? Actually, we have to dash off another session at 7pm, but we'll see you Monday. Charlie, can you show her out? Thank you so much for today. <laughs> All five of them. Insane. Bye, Rachel, love. Hello, what? Please exit to the left down the hallway, and congratulations. I'll see you on Monday. Ha, ha, ha.
That was voiceover by Jonathan Hughes, directed by Anisha Srinivasan. Uh, the character of Rachel was played by Jessica O'Toole. The character of Charlie was played by Matt Penman. The character of Greg was played by William Jarvis. The character of Sylvia was played by Hannah Lawrence. The character of Derek was played by Paul Sloss. And the character of Sophie was played by Jessica O'Toole again. I'm a bit scared now. Yeah. Uh, so with this one, we had a little bit of trouble because it suddenly changed spaces. Uh, and it turns out that uh, a person walking out of a recording studio, walking through corridors, going outside and going into a car and then closing the car and then calling someone on the phone is very difficult to do on a radio if they don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah, that's um, fair. Make it work somehow by going around it. That's part of the fun of the first season is, is learning to ourselves sort of how we're doing and, and what we're doing and... What works, what doesn't work. We've had quite a few times in the studio where we've gone, oh, well, that's 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 not going to work, um, mm-hmm. and tinkered around with things. When, when a writer encounters the actual mechanics of writing for podcasts, um, all of these things suddenly come into play, and hopefully what this podcast does is help people sort of get out of that. Yep. Do we not have a Patreon, by the way? We do have a Patreon. Don't we have a Patreon? We by the do way? have a Patreon <laughs> where you can support us for as little as a, a dollar a month, a pound a month, um, just to help uh, support production costs, recording studios, paying uh, paying actors, paying directors, uh, and we'll be doing a profit share for our writers. Um, so if you want to check out our Patreon, you can go to our website where um, we have a support us page, which will have your link directly there. Um, the Right Hour podcast is uh, not, um, well, currently. Um, <laughs> currently. The, right, <laughs> the, the Right Hour podcast is currently not funded by anything other than, you know, Many. just the two of us. Yeah. yeah well, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. You pay with time and I um, pay with money. It's completely self-funded um, at the moment. Um, so... Um, any if, so if you think that what, what we're doing is worthwhile, anything that you could do to help us would be great. Any way you'd like to, to help, we, we would greatly appreciate it. We are really passionate about what we're doing. We really think this is an important opportunity um, that needs to be out there for writers and that we have a lot we can contribute. But um, it is not, unfortunately, sustainable in the long run, completely financed by, um, you. by me um, <laughs> and my... Yes, um, my meager salary that also has to pay for my cat food. So she 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 eats a lot of cat food. She doesn't <laughs> only cats. She eats a lot of. He cat is a lot. You can't believe anything this man says. I have two cats. No, They're adorable. She has adorable. loads of cats. She has thirty-two cats. I, I, She's basically two. mostly cat. Um, okay, what do we have next? Next, we have got two. No, squ- you, you look into that. And then next, say. we've got two square by James James. So we can improv Shakespeare now? I. I memorized Hamlet. Every part. Did I tell you to do that? Yes, you said it's part of the spell. Are there witches in Hamlet? There is a ghost. Oh, which one has witches? Can we just get started? <sighs> Look at him. Perchance. Stop! Okay, repeat after me. Sum yum tum big bum big bum Sum yum tum big bum big bum Now you come on Sum yum is this for real? What is real? No, seriously. I signed away to be your indentured servant in purgatory for three lifetimes for you to make this happen. 
What the fuck is this? I just need him to see me one time. Can you do that, or do I need to find another Reiki spirit? Just say it. Sum, yum, tum. Is the big bum part up for discussion? Perhaps better word choices? That's the spell. I just have an issue with That's the, the spell. Sum, yum, tum, big bum, big bum. We have entered the realm. Have we? We break bread. I don't have a cracker. Ugh. What do you have? Gum? Ugh. Do you have an extra cracker? I have this one. It's the only cracker. Can we just share it? You need a whole one. Can you just check your book of spells? This is ridiculous. Hello, they're in here. Wh where is that? What are you doing? The books, the spells, they're in my head. Oh, Jake, it's me, Cass, Jake! Mm. It's important for you to get that out of your system. Can we chat for a sec? I suppose so. Listen, I know it's been, what, two years and... Fifteen. Fifteen? Fifteen. You arrived when you were five? More or less. So this guy... Jake. Right, Jake. So Jake is like from when you were five? Okay, well, no cracker, no real history to draw from, no... Wait, what do you mean? Well, I could have done a memory recall spell. Would that help him finally see me? Well, yes, but... But what? I mean, you can't possibly have any real memories with Jake. You were five. I was closer to six, if that helps. It does... Great! Mm it doesn't. Oh. W wait, where are you going? We need resources to cast the spell. You have none. I have a memory. Jake and I had a history, okay? You think I'd waste your time if he and I weren't soulmates? What you're going to see is like a lucid interpretation of one of his memories. You'll be inserted into his dream, essentially. I'll be here to facilitate the experience. Since you were ugh, five, you'll be five in this memory of yours. I'm ready. Some yum. We tum. still have to say that? Do you want to see Jake or not? Fine. Some yum tum big bum big bum. Sum yum tum big bum big bum. Sum yum tum big bum big bum. There he is. He's so dreaming. Go to him. He's waiting. <laughs> Jake. Hey. He can see me. He said hi. You like fruit roll ups? They're okay. Strawberry? Raspberry. Oh. I mean, raspberry is my second favorite after strawberry. I like blueberry. Oh. What's that? This? A ball. Why do you have it? Why do I have this? This is your memory. Something happened with the ball. Two square. The ball is for two square. Wanna play? Four square is better, but whatever. No popcorn, just straight two square. No tricks. Mm. 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 Oh. Yes. Mm. Mm. You cheat and you're fat, fat, fat. I don't remember it like that. Well, sometimes a memory gets distorted. Or selective. That too. I got sick the next day. That two square game was the last day I was at school. I just remember lying in bed, rewriting the end of that game over and over. It never ended with a ball hitting me in the face. Well, it technically ended with Jake calling you fat, but we're splitting hairs now. I was so in love with him. Mm, I can see why, statuesque. It's always the bad boys that we fall for, am I right? I guess so. Can I have a moment to myself? Of course. Jake, you're a lady killer, quite literally. You broke my heart because I destroyed you in two square. Maybe I should have let you win. Maybe I should have said blueberry fruit roll up. 
Maybe I wasn't cool enough. I don't know. I do know that taking a ball to the face helped me grow as a woman. It was a healthy reminder that just when I think it's safe to be better than a man in anything, a big red ball is waiting for me on the other side of success. And I love you for teaching me that. I'm ready. You're a strong woman, Cass. Three lifetimes as your servant. Any chance we can renegotiate terms? After all that talk about a red ball to the face and growth, you really want me to get in the way of that? You're right. Could be worse, I suppose. That's the spirit. <laughs> Some yum. Uh, may I? Oh. Some yum tum big bum big bum. So that was Two Square by James James, directed by Emma Jude Harris. The role of Cass was played by Pippa Beckwith, Bella was played by Zara Tompkinson, and Jake was played by Ross Kernahan. I really enjoyed this piece. Yeah. I thought it was really, I thought it was really fun. I, I think it's um, a, a sort of fun to look back at your own memories and sort of reevaluate them and that childhood love you had when you were five, who was actually probably a really horrible person who just threw a tennis ball at your head once. <laughs> I also, Wherever you are, Michael, I forgive you. <laughs> uh, what else? All right, our last piece of the night. Ooh, ooh. ooh, so enjoy it. So our last piece is called Bonfire of Memories by Matthew Wignall. Which begins um, wherever the hell we are right now. Huh. Oh, it's a nice, nice area, nice, nice, nice neighborhood. Day. Nice day. Yeah. that, Graham. I was just saying good morning. Uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you looking over the hedge into my garden. But we're neighbours. So? That doesn't give you the right to spy on me. I wasn't spying. People used to do this all the time. Haven't you seen those old pictures of people chatting in their backyards as they hung out the washing? Yes, but that was before reality television. You don't have that excuse. I think it's important that neighbours talk to each other. It's a forgotten art. There's no community spirit anymore. I was reading an article about it only last night. It said that our traditional sense of community is being eroded by the internet. Sounds fascinating. Where did you read it? Um, online. But that's not the point. The article wasn't saying don't use the internet. Because if we didn't, the article wouldn't exist. Exactly. I mean, basically, it was just saying that we should make more of an effort to communicate with each other face to face. You know, make more time for one another. And how do we do that? Well, talk to each other, like we're doing now. Uh, play board games, hold garden fates. Garden fates? Take a look at the size of this place. You couldn't hold a borrower's first birthday party in here. I, I don't mean literally in our gardens. I was actually thinking of that patch of wasteland at the top of Skidmore Street. Oh, yes, very picturesque. Oh, you could sell pims out of the old burnt-out Ford Cortina. And a treasure hunt. Whoever finds the most contraceptives wins a bottle of rhubarb wine. <laughs> Admittedly, the place needs tidying up a bit, but it has potential. Well, if you want to do it, Graham, go for it. Personally, I'm far too busy to get involved with garden fates. What are you doing, exactly? Starting again. What do you mean? You see this pile of rubbish? It amounts to approximately 90% of all my earthly belongings. And I'm going to set fire to it. Set fire to it? Are you feeling all right, Cordelia? I'm feeling fine, Graham. In fact, I haven't felt this good in ages. Why on earth are you going to burn all your property? You know what this is, Graham? It's a skirt. A skirt with all its tags still attached. I've owned this thing for years and haven't worn it once. Not ever. Well, if it's still got all its labels, then maybe you can return it. Get a refund. You're missing the point. This needs to be a grand gesture. It's a final goodbye to the old Cordelia and hello to the new Cordelia. 
free from all the years of accumulated crap. I mean, look at this. A Westlife CD. Ask me why I own a Westlife CD, Graham. Um, Go on, ask me. Why do you own a Westlife CD, Cordelia? It's the first CD I ever bought. Haven't played it since I was 12. I don't even like them. But I've carried it around with me out of some strange, twisted loyalty to the person I used to be. And this, a folder full of all my old school reports. Five solid years of being patronised and bullied by people who never work weekends, get about a hundred days holiday a year and still claim to be overworked. My mother was a teacher. And look at this. A framed photograph of my old boyfriend. What a dickhead he turned out to be. I'm even burning my laptop. Your laptop? Why not? You're the one who said the internet is destroying all community spirit. Yes, but your laptop? Everyone needs one these days. I'm just appealing for moderation. And that's exactly what this is. Moderation. No more sad evenings on Facebook being bombarded by other people's children doing wholly unremarkable things like looking a little bit cute. No more hilarious videos of dogs attacking their own reflections. The amount of hours this thing has cost me is terrifying. I have no discipline when it comes to the internet. You give me a choice between reading an online essay on ancient philosophy or watching a video of a cat indecently cleaning itself in a kitchen, then I'm afraid there's only one winner and it's not Socrates. From now on, if I want to use a computer, I'll go to the library. Oh, uh, can I have it then? What? The laptop? Well, if you're only going to burn it. But I have to burn it. That's the whole point, remember? This has to be a symbolic rebirth, where the end and the beginning come together as one. Somehow just giving it away doesn't have the same dramatic quality. I'll give you 50 quid for it. That'll be even worse. This isn't a garage sale, Graham. It's me becoming a better person. 75. No, it's not for sale. Nothing on that pile is. Good morning, Cordelia. Oh, morning, Mrs Routledge. Good morning, Graham. Good morning, Mrs Routledge. How are you both this fine morning? Very well, thank you, Mrs Routledge. Fine, thank you, Mrs Routledge. I notice you don't complain about her looking over her hedge into your garden. Yes, well, she's from a different generation, isn't she? Besides, she terrifies me. What are you doing there, Cordelia? Just having a bit of a sort out, Mrs Routledge. A sort out? How splendid. Nothing like a spring clean to clear the cobwebs away. What's the plan? Are you having a garage sale or opening one of those eBay shops everyone seems to be talking about? It's about time we had one. Every other town seems to. You know, I thought that when that old Argos closed down, we'd get one there, but no such luck. What do we get? Another blasted coffee shop. At this rate, there'll be one for every person in the town. And what will that lead to? People drinking coffee on their own. More social alienation and the end of all community spirit. It's the internet's fault. I read an article about it last night. Was it on the BBC website? Yes, that's right. I read that one too. I'm thinking of holding a garden fete to help bring the community together, get people talking to each other again. A garden fete? What a wonderful gesture, Graham. Where are you holding it? Well, I was thinking the top of Skidamore Street, where uh, that patch of wasteland is. Oh, the perfect place. Oh, I could sell glasses of pims out of that old burnt-out Ford Cortina. You could take some leaflets, Cordelia promoting your new eBay shop. You'll sell all that stock in no time. But I'm not selling it, Mrs Routledge. You're not? Then why are you opening an eBay shop? Rather odd behaviour, if you don't mind me saying so. Surely having a spring clean and opening a shop complement each other beautifully. Don't look a smiling crocodile in the mouth. But I'm not opening a shop. I've brought all this stuff out here to burn, not to sell. To burn? Why, for Devon's sake? A fresh start. I own too much. Clothes I never wear, books I never read, DVDs I never watch, and a laptop that has no positive effect on my life whatsoever. So I'm burning it. What about your mobile phone? <laughs> oh, I'm keeping that. I haven't gone completely insane. Quite right. I simply couldn't exist without Snapchat. But why don't you try and sell some of these things, Cordelia? You might make some money. Exactly what I was saying, Mrs Routledge. One person's junk is another person's treasure. Isn't that what they say? You might even sell that awful skirt there. Some people will wear anything. But I don't want to sell it. It has to be burned. If I start trying to sell all this stuff, the process could take weeks, months, even years. This way, it'll all be over in moments. I want... no... I need to see that purifying light of fire. 
Then, and only then, will I be able to move on. But what about the environment? Think of the damage you'll do, all those fumes and smoke. You'll turn the place into an environmental disaster. That's then. a very good point, Mrs Routledge. Mm. If you want to get rid of it all in one go, you should take it down to the commercial waste disposal site on Hazel Road. Or a charity shop. Do some good for a worthy cause. I could organise a collection vehicle for you if you like. A charity shop? Who in their right mind would want to buy my school reports? Someone who likes a good laugh. Well, split it up. Anything worth selling, I'll take and the rest can be recycled. Problem solved. But I can't split it up. It's all meant to go together. This means a lot to me. It's a crucial stage in my self-improvement. The waste disposal site it is, then. Hardly the dramatic closing of a chapter I was hoping for. At least you'll be rid of it all in one grand swoop. It's a bold gesture of sorts. Not exactly what I was looking for, but I suppose you're right. Of course, there's always an alternative. I don't believe it. What did I tell you? I won. I actually won. Mm -hmm. A grand enough gesture for you. Thank you. What for? You did it. You supplied the raw materials and you welded it all together. Nothing to do with me. Yeah, but it was your idea. You're the one that suggested turning all my old possessions into an art installation and entering it into a competition. Well, with my brains and your talent, we could go far. So what's next? Hmm. Have you seen that old burnt-out Ford Cortina at the top of Skidamore Street? So that was Bonfire of Memories by Matthew Wignall, directed by Emma Jude Harris. Cordelia was played by Pippa Beckwith. Graham was played by Dale Savage. And Mrs. Routledge was played by Zara Tompkinson. Hmm. I wish I was called Cordelia. I know a little girl named Cordelia, and she goes by Cordy, which I think is quite cute. That reminds me of like a, like a hoover. It reminds me a lot of, of like my neighborhood at home, where no matter what you're doing in your yard, one of your neighbors is watching and wants to comment. <laughs> It's the, I, I think this is sort of a classical setting, sort of a middle class backyard, yeah. a classical setting for a lot of BBC radio programmes from like the 70s and the 80s. So sort of remind me, it was quite nostalgic for me making this. Yeah, you just Not want to have a nice cathartic moment in your, yard, uh, your own yard and somebody's got to ask you why you haven't trimmed your hedges in a week. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Trimmed hedges? No. Like taking things to be burnt outside. Um, only after particularly bad breakups. Okay, um, we have reached the end of this month's episode. We have. Oh, it went by so fast. If you like us, um, please um, subscribe, subscribe. Please share. Please tell people about it. Please tell Marie's butcher about it. Yes, you can find us on. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook. You can share our post. You can tell everybody how much you love it. Like, review, share, subscribe. You can subscribe to us on iTunes. You can subscribe subscribe to us on Spotify. You can uh, subscribe to us on SoundCloud. You can graffiti our SoundCloud page, but it's, you can put comments on the podcast yeah. from the SoundCloud. We'd love to hear what you guys think. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Um, Thank you for listening and goodbye. Goodbye.